Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor Fletcher Wright at the National Church of God. I want to welcome you to our Thursday night Bible study. Hallelujah. We started last week talking about angels and your destiny. We're going to pick up on that and continue on that subject tonight. Hallelujah. And, you know, we have to become familiar with the spiritual world just as much as we are this natural world. You are a spirit being. You live in a physical body. Hallelujah. But how many of you know we need to know more about where we originated from? Praise God. And that world is very real. And we're going to take the Word of God that bridges the gap between the natural and the spiritual and just begin to talk about the ministry of angels, how they are connected to your destiny. Father, we honor you tonight and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for your precious word, and we thank you this night, Lord, for opening our understanding, Lord, as we continue to talk about the ministry of angels and how they are connected to our future, to our destiny. I thank you, Lord, for bringing forth the truth, the reality of your word, and the ministry of angels that you have established for us and for our benefit. We thank you for it, Lord, and anoint me to speak your word and every listener to hear your word this night. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I want to go back to our text that we started out with last week in the book of Hebrews in chapter 1. I'm not going to read the entirety of those verses of Scripture. Praise the Lord that I read last week, but I'm going to pick up in verse number 13 of chapter 1. It says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? To which of the angels did he say, Sit down by my right hand? No, if if we read the entirety of the scriptures, the context, he's actually talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. After Jesus accomplished redemption, he went back, he sat down by the right hand of the Father. Amen. But our subject in this teaching is concerning the ministry of angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Our angels at work ministering on our behalf. Amen. And so it says uh, in verse number 14, are they not all ministering spirits In fact, let me read verse number 13 and 14 together. But to which of the angels said he at any time, said on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Where we went to the scriptures last week in Romans and we discovered there Praise God that we are heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says in Galatians 3 that if we are in Christ, then we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Praise God. So we are heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And here it says that they are all, the angels are all ministering spirits sent forth. Now, have you know, that's words declaring an assignment, activity, hallelujah, sent forth the minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Praise God. So you are an heir of salvation. And so therefore we find out that Jesus has sat down by the right hand of the Father But if his angels are not seated in heaven, where are they? Well, they have been sent forth in this earthly realm to minister on your behalf as an heir of salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we begin last week to look at different scriptures we talked about. It says over, uh, matter of fact, in the book of Hebrews, in uh, 13, 1 and 2, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. And we use that in the context of talking about what do angels look like. Where well, they're not these little babies with uh, diapers flying around 
you know, that we see many times in these religious paintings. Oh, hallelujah, we're going to discover tonight that they are mighty in power and in strength. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, they can get the job accomplished. One angel in the Old Testament slew over 200,000 of the enemy in one night. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want us to continue to talk about the ministry of angels tonight. Praise the Lord. We turned over in Luke 15. Once again, we're not going to turn there. I'm just kind of catching up a little bit from last week. And there we started talking about the fact that, you know, if someone has a hundred sheep and one is lost, when that one is restored, then praise God, there's a time of rejoicing taking place. And then in that same uh, context, it said the woman that had ten pieces of silver and one was lost, she searches diligently and once it is found, then rejoicing takes place. And, and in that like manner, it said the angels in heaven rejoice when one lost sinner comes to the Lord. When one person is born again, when one person is saved, even the angels in heaven are rejoicing over that one sinner that has come to the Lord. That means this, that the angels have interest in humanity. They're concerned about what's going on in your life. They desire the very best for you. Hallelujah. And we know that a third of the angels fell from heaven with Lucifer. But those that remain are uh, obedient to do the will of the Heavenly Father. And they have been sent forth to minister on your behalf. Hallelujah. And so I want us to just look at some examples in the Word of God tonight about the ministry of angels. Praise God. I was reading earlier today over in the book of Acts and and I'm not going to take a lot of time because some of these stories are quite lengthy, but, but sometime just read through uh, some of these stories about the angels and how they get involved in helping someone accomplish their assignment, fulfill their destiny, their potential. Hallelujah. That's one thing about the angels of the Lord. Praise God. They help us fulfill our purpose and our destiny. Hallelujah. And I was reading earlier today over in Acts chapter 27. Now remember, this is in the life of Paul. Paul has uh, literally been given an assignment that he is, go, he is to go and to, he is to speak to Caesar in, in Rome. And, but he's been in a time of prayer and a time of fasting, a time of seeking the Lord. And we're not going to go back to those scriptures, but in... Acts in chapter 26, Paul goes before Agrippa and he has an opportunity to speak into his life. And, and we find out that uh, God, he had been under arrest and God would uh, gave him favor with Agrippa. And he would have been released other than the fact that he had requested audience with Caesar. And therefore he remained as a prisoner and he was put on a boat to go to Italy eventually to speak uh, to Caesar. But something happened on the way on that journey. They encountered a great storm. As a matter of fact, in a time of prayer, God had already revealed uh, to Peter, or excuse me, uh, had already revealed to Paul about what was going to happen on uh, that uh, cruise, on that journey by ship that the great storm was going to come and loss would be experienced. But Paul begins to pray and he begins to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. And then in verse number 23, it says, And there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. In other words, he belongs to God and God has sent an angel. And he said, this angel, praise God, for, the, for there stood by me this night an angel of God. Hallelujah. And then verse 24, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought 
before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Oh, hallelujah. Now notice this, that the angel is there to help Paul fulfill his destiny. Hallelujah. To accomplish his assignment. I believe that God has sent forth his angels into the life of those who shall be heirs of salvation. That you can accomplish your destiny. You can fulfill your assignment. Amen. And in this situation, praise God, we find out that even though this storm came forth, Paul told them that literally that there would be no one experience the loss of their life. The ship, yes, would be destroyed. But we find out as we follow through with this particular story, praise God, that they're going to all be spared. Hallelujah. And they end up, praise God, on uh, the island of Melita, praise God, and, and at this point in time, uh, Paul receives great favor. I'm going to just rehearse that story a little bit. Remember, they literally were there on the island of Melita. The, those that were there on the island welcomed them, and then Paul began to, uh, you know, build a fire. It was cold. It was wet. So he began to build a fire. He gathered wood, and as that fire was started, a viper came out of the wood there and fastened itself to Paul. And it was a poisonous viper or snake. And everyone was uh, watching what had taken place, expecting him to fall over and to die. Hallelujah. But him, you know, praise God, that uh, he did not die. And we began to find out that he lived. And they began to see and recognize that God was with him. They even thought that he was God. But, and you know, God was with him. And he was a child of God. And so anyway, uh, they, uh, literally a healing revival broke out there on that island where uh, many that were sick were healed. But what I'm wanting to see, is because the, our, our study is about the ministry of angels, amen. Hallelujah. How angels are connected to your destiny and to your purpose, to your assignment, whatever it, it may be. Praise God. We need to know more about the spiritual realm. Amen. That's where we came from. You are a child of God. God is a spirit, and God created this natural physical realm. But you are a spirit being. You live in a body, and you have a soul. Hallelujah. And we find out that the spirit realm, praise God, is, there's a lot of activity takes place in the realm of the spirit. But here, this angel appears uh, to Paul and begins to give him instructions and begin to reveal to him that he is there to work with him to fulfill his assignment. Well, we know that the assignment was fulfilled. Praise God for that. Talking about the ministry of angels. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to go back for just a moment. Praise God. And, and uh, reflect upon the life of a man in the Old Testament by uh, the name of Gideon. Praise God. Most of you know the story of Gideon and the Gideon's 300. Praise God. And how many of you know that the Midianites literally were making war against them? That every fall during harvest time, the Midianites would come and they would literally steal their harvest and steal their cattle and leave them in devastation and in great need. But then they began to pray and call out to God. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I want to just read a verse of scripture here. And I'm, I'm in Judges 6, in verse number 6. It says, And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. They cried unto the Lord. It says in my uh, context or reference there, it says they begin to pray unto the Lord. And God sent a prophet to begin to prophesy and to speak into their lives. 
Oh, hallelujah. And in response to them praying and seeking God, it carries me back so many times when I see stories like this in the scriptures to Second Chronicles 7.14 that we quote very often where the people of God, he was saying, regardless of what's going on in your life, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, I'm going to hear from heaven and I'm going to forgive your sins and heal your land. And so we begin to see here in the book of Judges, in the life of Gideon, that God begins to respond to their prayers. Hallelujah. And he sent forth a prophet to begin to prophesy and speak into their life. But then we find out that one day in the life of Gideon, because they would have to hide themselves from the Midianites to try to reap their harvest. And, and here, here <clears throat> he was literally down in a, a wine pit there uh, thrashing the wheat, hoping no one would be able to find him concerning the enemy. And an angel of the Lord shows up. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to just read verse number 12. I'm in, still in chapter 6, Judges 6, verse 12. It says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, hallelujah, and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now here we find that literally that he is hiding in this pit, hiding from the enemy. Oh, hallelujah. And God comes along and begins to speak into the life of Gideon. And what does he say? And he said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. I believe if you saw yourself the way the Lord sees you, it would change your identity. Hallelujah. Here, Gideon, hiding from the enemy, literally in fear, as all of the nation of Israel, those in that region. Amen. Because they knew it's that time of the year when the enemy would show up to try to rob them once again. But now they're praying, they're crying out to God, and now God is intervening. He's responding, and he sends an angel, and he says to Gideon, Thou mighty man of valor. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then Gideon begins to respond. Now, you know the story of, of how he asked the Lord to, you know, give him a witness of what was going on. And we know the story of how God brought it to the point where there were too many of them. And God brought them all the way down to only 300 because God was going to get the glory and the honor out of this victory and turning that situation around. Amen. But the main thing I want to see in the context of our teaching is the, our angels and our destiny. The ministry of angels and how they are connected to our destiny and our future. So here, this angel begins to speak forth his destiny, praise God, to speak into his life, to reveal what God thinks about him. Hallelujah. Mighty man of valor, praise God. Well, how many of you know that's ultimately what Gideon became because God was there working in his life in preparation for working through his life. And God was declaring, praise God, there that you have great potential. Amen. Hallelujah. So the angel began to speak forth his destiny and began to reveal the potential that was in him. Praise God. The potential, the hidden abilities of God in the life of Gideon. There's hidden abilities in your own life. There's great potential in your own life. And God comes along working with us. And even through the ministry of angels working in our life. Amen. In order to work through our life. Praise the Lord. Well, 
I'll read that story sometimes in its entirety. It's a wonderful story, praise God, of how God brought great victory in and through the life of Gideon, someone walking in fear, but God brought him to a place of being a mighty man of valor. And you are a mighty man or woman of valor as far as God is concerned. Amen. I want to flip over for just a moment to Daniel chapter 10. We're talking about the ministry of angels and how they are connected to your destiny. Praise God. God does not expect us to be able to accomplish on our own, through our own ability, through our own weaknesses. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Praise God. And here in Daniel chapter 10, when we know the story of Daniel, it's a wonderful book of how a remnant of Israel had been taken into captivity into Babylon. Amen. And we know the story of the three Hebrew children, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know how they were thrown in a fiery furnace, but God brought them out, hallelujah, through the fourth man in the furnace as they continued to keep their faith and their confidence in God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God spared them and brought them out, and they came out without even the smell of smoke. And guess what? They were brought out, and the only thing devoured in that fiery furnace were the things that kept them bound. They were thrown bound into the fire, and when they looked in, they saw not only the three, but there was a fourth man that looked like the Son of God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Divine angelic intervention, amen, into the lives of the children of Israel. And so it said that they looked in and they saw them uh, loose in the fire, praise God. And they came out and received great promotion, praise God. Hallelujah. But then we find out in the life of uh, Daniel, remember later, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And have you know, it says the angels of the Lord shut up the mouths of the lions. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're ever thrown in a lion's den, oh, hallelujah, you would appreciate the ministry of angels in a greater way. Amen. So we see that angelic intervention was taking place in the lives of the three Hebrew children, in the life of Daniel, in the lion's den. Amen. But now, and we find out that over in Daniel uh, chapter 9, praise God. And matter of fact, I'll give you the reference. We won't turn, uh, we won't read that. But in Daniel chapter 9, in verses 2, there Daniel begins to locate himself in the book of Jeremiah. Praise God. And Jeremiah was speaking forth at the time and the season in which Daniel lived. And when Daniel saw that, he began to pray. He began to fast. He began to seek God. And over in Daniel chapter 10, he begins to reveal what happens. Notice that Daniel did not just find the word of God for his time and his season in his life and just say, well, if it's God's will, God will do it. No, he began to pray and fast and seek the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And so here in Daniel chapter 10, this brings us back to the context of his response to receiving that word from the book of Jeremiah. And it says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came of flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. In other words, how many of you have heard of the Daniel fast? Um, that's where that Daniel fast came from. Amen. For 21 days, Daniel is praying, he's fasting, he's seeking God in response to the word of God concerning his life. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so I'm going to drop all the way down to verse number 10. And here we begin to find out 
that God releases an angel to go forth in response to Daniel praying and fasting and seeking God. And so in uh, Daniel 10, verse 10, it says, And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. For unto thee am I now sent. Oh, that's powerful. Amen. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he, this is talking about the angel of the Lord, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself through prayer and fasting and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words are because of thine words. Oh, if it's God's will, God's just going to do it. We don't have any part to play. We do not have any responsibility in that situation. Well, let me tell you, I could give you scripture after scripture where it begins to reveal that we have to begin to pray. We just came from the book of Judges, amen, in the life of Gideon. Continually, year after year, they were being robbed by the enemy, amen. But there came a time when they began to pray. They began to seek God, and God responded. Hallelujah. And we begin to find out here, praise God, that uh, Daniel is praying. He's fasting. He's seeking God, amen. And it notice that once again, the angel said, from the very first day, for from the first day. Now, how long has he been praying and fasting, seeking God? 21 days. When did God hear his prayer? For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words are because of thy words. Now let's just think for a moment. What if Daniel had not prayed? What if Daniel had not spent this time in seeking God? If he had not spoken words in prayer, then the angel would have not been given an assignment because he said, I am here for your words are because of your words. Oh, my goodness, this is powerful. It begins to reveal how, ange how angelic intervention is often released when people begin to pray and they begin to seek God. I believe that prayer is connected to the will of God. And angels are one of the ways that God is going to confirm His Word in our time of prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And here we get this wonderful picture of how angels get involved in bringing forth the will of God. So we see this picture here, Daniel discovering in the book of Jeremiah the will of God for his life, for that time and that season. So he begins to pray. He begins to seek God. And from the very first day he began to pray, his prayers were heard. And the angel was given an assignment Concerning what? The words of Jeremiah? No, the words of Daniel that was in agreement with the words of Jeremiah. Hallelujah. When we begin to pray and we begin to speak and declare in agreement with God's word and what God has spoken, what God has declared, hallelujah, God's going to confirm his word with signs following. But when does that happen? When we believe in our heart, we confess with our mouth. When we begin to pray, we begin to speak the word of God in that situation. 
So the angel was released on the very first day. But what is happening? Spiritual warfare begins to break out. Hallelujah. And then it goes on in verse number 13. Why the delay? 21 days have gone by. He heard and responded. The angel was released, given an assignment on the very first day that the words of Daniel were heard. Why the delay? Well, verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. The prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now, let me just say this. He is not referring to a physical prince of Persia that sat on a physical throne. He was talking about a principality, a prince of darkness that literally ruled over Persia to try to literally stop the will of God from coming forth in that nation. Amen. Because you see, there's different levels of the kingdom of darkness. Praise God. There's principalities, there's powers, there's minds, there's dominion. There's different levels. And much like our military has generals and has different uh, levels and uh, all, all the way down to a private, praise God. That's that same manner in the kingdom of darkness. There's different levels. And there was a prince of Persia, a principality that was literally assigned over that nation of Persia to try to stop the will of God from coming forth. And so therefore, when Daniel began to intercede and began to pray, an angel from the Lord was released and he was given an assignment because of the words of Daniel. But it says the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. So get this picture. Daniel is praying, and the words of Daniel literally has caused warfare to break out in the realm of the Spirit. No wonder the Bible tells us in Hebrews to hold fast your profession of faith without wavering. For God is faithful, that promise. Amen. From the time that we pray, from the time we release our faith, and respond to what God's Word says in our life, then how many know there's going to be something called time go by before we see that answer? It may be a short time. It may be an extended time. But in the meantime, we're to hold fast our profession of faith without wavering. Hold fast, hold fast, hold fast your profession of faith without wavering. If the Bible says there that we're to hold fast, that indicates that someone would try to take that from us. Amen. We fight the good fight of warfare. Hallelujah. We fight the good fight of faith. Let me put it that way in uh, Timothy. We fight the good fight of faith. We hold fast our profession of faith without wavering. We're not going to let the enemy talk us out of what God's promise has declared. We're going to be like Abraham in Romans 4 that even though he wavered for a period of time, he finally came to the place that he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Oh, hallelujah. And we want to come to that place that we are fully persuaded. And I believe that Daniel was fully persuaded that what God had promised in Jeremiah, that God was going to, to perform. Amen. Hallelujah. So here Daniel is praying. Ten days goes by. He sees no response. He sees no change, but he continues in prayer. What if Daniel, after ten days, had said, well, this is not working. I might as well just give up and forget about this situation. Well, how many of you know that the words of Daniel literally gave authority to the angels to continue in their warfare until the victory came forth. We're not to waver in our faith. We're to ask in faith nothing 
wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. That's in James chapter 1. Amen. So here we find out that Daniel is praying. He's believing God. And day after day goes by. And what is he doing? He's holding fast his profession of faith. He's continuing to pray and fast and seek God. Hallelujah. And then on that 21st day, the angel shows up. He said, Daniel, from the first day you begin to pray, your prayers were heard. And I'm here in response to your words. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, but the prince of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. He said, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help. Uh, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. In other words, we find out warfare is taking place. God sent reinforcements to carry out that assignment on behalf of Daniel. Hallelujah. If there's a delay, maybe some reinforcements are needed. But don't give up on the promises of God. Now, our subject in this teaching is the ministry of angels. Angels in our destiny, helping us fulfill our purpose. Hallelujah. And so now we find out after 21 days, the angel is there to carry out that assignment and to speak into the life of Daniel. Oh, my goodness. Uh, such a beautiful story, revealing there's more that goes on than we can see in the natural realm. As I said before, the spiritual realm is very real. Oh, hallelujah. And there's so many different stories in the scriptures, praise God. I love it over. And we're not going to turn there because our time is flying by tonight. But over in Second Kings in uh, chapter 6, remember the story there of Elisha, the prophet of God. And because there we find out that the Syrians were continually attacking the children of Israel. But the prophet Elisha would reveal the plans of the enemy to the king of Israel. And then, praise God, they would be ready when the enemy would try to ambush them and bring an attack against them. And finally, the king of Syria said there must be a spy in the ranks. And it was revealed that there was a prophet in Israel that revealed all of the secrets. Amen. So literally, he released an army to go and eliminate Elisha in this situation. And I'm going to pick up in chapter uh, 6 of Second Kings in verse 17. Praise God. And matter of fact, let me just give a little bit more context here. And there was a servant by the name of Gehazi that he got up early one morning as he would often do to fulfill his, uh, his chores for that morning. And when he got up, he saw that they were surrounded by a hostile army. And he was concerned to say the least. And he went to Elisha in verse 17 and said, what shall we do? What shall we do? And Elisha, the prophet, prayed a very unusual prayer. It says, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, that's where, remember, he had already spoken and said, there's more that be with us than be with them. What did we say? Two-thirds of the angels remain faithful to God. Hallelujah. Regardless of what the enemy's trying to do, we've got them outnumbered. Amen. And here, the angels of the Lord had the enemy surrounded. Praise God. And we praise God for the ministry of angels working on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. But the scriptures reveal uh, through many different witnesses about the ministry of angels. Amen. Let me just talk a little bit about 
the angels and what the Bible says about their how they are mighty and powerful. But in Second Peter two eleven, it says, "Whereas angels which are greater in power and might." Hallelujah. And then in Psalms one hundred three verse twenty, it says, "Bless the Lord, ye his angels." that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. Oh, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. The angels hearken to the voice of God's Word. Well, let me know this, that we become the voice of God's Word. When we begin to take the promises of God and you know the promises are yes and amen to everyone that believeth. And when we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth, we become the voice of His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. And the angels hearken unto the voice of God's Word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then what about numbers? There's so many witnesses. Let me just share a few of those. Talking about the number of angels. In Psalm 68, verse 17. It says the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. But notice that, even thousands of angels. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Kings, we just mentioned that scripture there in chapter 6, where the angels had the armies surrounded. And then in Hebrews 12, 22, it says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. How many angels are there? Oh my goodness, we said before that when someone is born in this earth, then we find out that angels are assigned to them. Hallelujah. Well, there's billions of uh, humanity in the earth. That means there's billions of angels in the earth. Amen. Revelations 5, 11 says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Oh my goodness, that sounds like, once again, an innumerable company of angels. Amen. But what do these angels do? We've looked at several witnesses tonight throughout the scriptures. We find that, remember, over in the life of Isaac, how an angel was sent forth to find and bring forth a bride for Isaac. And that angel knew exactly where to go to find that bride. Aren't you glad that the angels that have been assigned to you have knowledge concerning your future, your purpose, your destiny, your calling? Hallelujah. The angels work together, praise God, to carry out the will of God in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's look here. Praise God. And matter of fact, let me just share that scripture in Genesis 24, verse 7. It says, The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son, talking about Isaac, from thence. He shall send his angels before thee. Hallelujah. And that angel went forth and brought that bride to Isaac. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And in closing tonight, I want us to flip for just a moment. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Over uh, to the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. We're going to look at a very familiar psalm. Psalms 91. Praise God. You could probably quote it by heart. The angels of the Lord. What is their calling? What is their purpose? Well, you are their calling. Amen. They've been sent forth.
to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. You say, well, that was Daniel. You know, uh, that was Gideon. You know, that was Paul. How, what does that have to do with me? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation? Through many witnesses, we can confirm that you are an heir of salvation. They've been sent forth to minister in your behalf. Amen. But here in Psalms 91, I don't have time to read this whole psalm. You probably know it by heart. But I want us to go down to verse number 9. Psalms 91, verse 9. It says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Well, how is this possible? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. My goodness, hallelujah. Psalms 91, such a beautiful psalm concerning God's promises over your life as an individual. Amen. I love it in the first verse there where it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then it says, I will say of the Lord. Notice a decree, a declaration is being spoken for. And that literally is always very significant. Even concerning the ministry of angels, they hearken unto the voice of His Word. And when we declare His Word, the angels respond. Let me tell you, your words can either release angels or it can hinder angels. They do not respond to doubt and fear and unbelief. Oh, hallelujah. But they respond to the promises of God. Hallelujah. Spoken out of the mouth of a believer. Praise God. But here we find out that literally he's talking, first of all, in verse number 9 about fellowship. We have fellowship with the Lord because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. We have fellowship with the Most High. Amen. Hallelujah. And then in verse 10, it talks about there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. That's talking about divine protection. So in verse 9, we have fellowship. In verse 10, we have divine protection. But then in verse 11, it begins to reveal what he uses to enforce that protection in our life. And what is that? The ministry of angels. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we see through the scriptures time and time again how the ministry of angels is connected to your destiny, your purpose, your calling. Amen. Then it says in Hebrews uh, 2, we didn't look at that tonight, we are uh, not to neglect the such a great salvation, referring to the different aspects of salvation, including the ministry of angels. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a very important part. Praise God. Sometime back, I've been teaching on angels, and I've read several angel stories where people had given their testimonies of how God literally had sent an angel to intervene in their life many times for divine protection, at times maybe even divine healing, but fulfilling the promises of God in their life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I love just talking about the ministry of angels and how God has sent forth. Hallelujah. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation? Father, we thank you this night for the ministry of angels. Hallelujah. Lord, we do not worship angels. An angel from the Lord will not accept worship from a child of God. Hallelujah. We see that in the Word of God. 
Hallelujah. We do not worship angels. We worship our God. Hallelujah. Angels have been sent forth to minister as servants unto the child of God. And we thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. We'll probably pick up next week and talk about angels a little bit more. Hallelujah. We're talking, uh, we're approaching the Christmas season and next week I'll give you some directions concerning our schedule for the Christmas season. But we'll be here next week, praise God, continuing our Thursday night Bible study. Well, let me invite you to come to church Sunday morning. Amen. The doors will be open at 10 o'clock. Hallelujah. For a time of worship and prayer and the ministry of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Friday night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And tomorrow night, we'll be getting together in the sanctuary at 730. The doors will be open for people that want to come to the Friday night prayer meeting. Praise God. That will be from 730 until 830. In Jesus' name. And then Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Amen. Well, God bless you. And we will see you again. If not this weekend, we will see you next Thursday night. In Jesus' name. God bless you.